What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're here on a new project building this humongous, almost 800 square foot deck. We had to take a little bit of a break from the other job. We'll wait for the tiny house delivery, so we will be back there. Here we're gonna show you layout, footings, and some of our framing details, so make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. All right, so we're here first day on site, and the first thing that we have to do is mark out our footing location. But first, let's get into the design. This project is gonna be insane. We have almost 800 square feet of deck space, a 20 by 20 roof structure and pergola off to the side. Underneath that roof, we have a lounge area with TV above a fireplace. To the left, we have an outdoor kitchen, which is highlighted by those two hanging chairs. And we were able to squeeze some extra functionality out of the space by doing a bar top in front of that bump out. When it comes to our footing locations, we have 16 helical piles. All we do is reference these plans, take measurements, spray them out. So let's get into that. Then we'll get our string line, Got a brand new one, brand new. We'll try to keep this one for a little longer than usual, not get it all tangled up. We'll see how that works. Are you stepping on that good? Yep. Okay. That's one footing. So our beam that's at the edge of this little walkway bar area is actually gonna continue through our main deck and be our mid-span beam at that point. So we're just gonna continue this line straight across. It'll make it a lot easier to install our beams. It's our perimeter beam here. It's our mid-span beam over on this main area. Okay. We gotta cut a little bit of these stairs away. I think we can do it so the stairs will still be functional because we won't be framing for another couple of days. We got the play set over there. We wanna keep these intact if we can, so uh, we'll try to be careful. All I have is a metal blade. We've run out of wood blades. I think it'll cut through wood. It's, it's actually not a metal blade, it's automotive dismantling. And cars used to be made out of wood back in the day, so we'll see. So we'll just start cutting through it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Use some nice trim nails to put this uh, graspable handrail on. Gotta love that. Builders these days, am I right? Actually, we're pretty good. Isn't it funny that the point of this is uh, Really for like elderly people that need something to grasp onto. And this is what's holding it in. Gotta love it. Oh, what's this joint held together with? Oh, who would've guessed? Yep, trim nails. Unbelievable. You know what, John? Did I do a good job? You did a good job. Thank you. There she is, last footing, last footing. Marked out, ready to go. Goliath Tech is here, ready to install our helical piles. And what they do, we send it to their engineer. They spec out which size piles for each load. Architect supplies the load on each footing. Their engineer specifies which pile goes in there. So we have three larger piles and they're gonna go along this line because we're gonna have our deck extending off of there. That's gonna basically act as a ledger for the outdoor kitchen area. And we have one point load on this outside corner that is a little bit larger. So we are gonna have a large pile here. The rest of them all be the same size. And uh, like usual, should get these in pretty quick. We'll be ready to frame. All right, we got all of our footings in. You saw that installation. Now we're ready to frame. We don't have to wait for anything. No inspection. There is an engineering report that gets submitted to the township, but we'll have that in a little bit. We're ready to start framing. Let's show you what we got. Is that a problem? A what? A solution we haven't found yet. <laughs> it's a solution we haven't found yet. Yeah, so this is like right on the edge of where the deck's gonna go. So what I think, we'll go a little bit beyond it. 
Our joists are gonna run this way here, so this will be in between a joist bay. Shouldn't really get in the way. Operation should be fine, so don't think we'll really have a problem. We'll just adjust uh, our measurement by about two inches. Ledger's going up. We just temporarily put it in place with framing nails. We'll go back with some ledger locks, make sure that this thing's really locked in for justice. So we find sometimes it's easier to do a laser and figure out our measurement at each footing and then cut six bys. But in this case, we figured it would be a little bit faster, a little bit easier to just run our joist. We've got it attached to the house, throw a level on it, put a temporary brace here. So this is now level, run a string line, measure down, figure out the height of our six by, be good to go, set our beam. six and a quarter you saw how we just ran that string line underneath of our joist so that we can measure down to each helical pile we got 26 inches so we need to subtract the height of the beam nine and three eighths that's going to be the height of our six by we can put that in there build our beam it should go right underneath of our joist tom why don't you get over here with your strong muscles yeah maybe just try to push this down a tiny bit you been down. working out or what? I mean, pushing down, you can't really do much. Yeah, with that attitude. <laughs> See, the most important thing, most important thing for any task, can do attitude. Remember that. Okay, Tom. We got our ledgers up. Now, as soon as we set these beams, we'll start throwing joists up. She'll go pretty quick. It's a little hot. Do I look sweaty? No, your shirt's black, so it's all just oh, the really? same color. Yeah. Oh, nice. Your shorts are a different story, but. Don't get any shirt... shots of my rear. <laughs> So I pre-cut all of our joists for this small walkway section, needed 16 of them. So I have all those cut and piled up now. I'm just measuring them according to their height because a two by 10 is gonna vary usually between nine and a quarter and nine and a half. So I'm checking each one, separating it into four piles. We've got nine and a quarter, nine and three eighths, nine and three eighths plus, and nine and a half. So we'll just install them in order. So we have a nice flat surface. And we don't want to go nine and a quarter, nine and a half, nine and a quarter. You'll see that hump. So it takes a little bit of time, but definitely worth it. Most of this deck framed up, the two main sections. I kind of kept forgetting that we have this offshoot coming off the side. Our triple joist on the end is really acting as a ledger for this other deck. So uh, we're gonna have some joist hangers on here. Man, this thing's getting big. This is a long deck. Oh yeah, what is it, 56 feet long? 50, what have we got? 21, 20, and 15. 21, 20, and 15. 56. Yeah, 56. <laughs> 
You can see again what we did here to figure out our beam and our post height. We just set our two end joists, made sure that they're level, put this temporary brace on it, and then we can measure down from there. So let's see how it works out. Ooh, nice fit. Pro wood, baby. One thing that you'll want to make sure of is you're getting the right lumber. So you want to make sure any of your structural stuff is all rated for ground contact. It's off the ground, so you might think you don't need ground contact, but any structural members, make sure you're looking for this tag, ground contact. Just like that, we got this additional section all framed up and ready to go. And now we have pretty much the bones of this structure in installed. Now we get to all of the framing details and there are a ton of them on this project. So make sure you tune into the next vlog for some of our accessory framing and also starting to frame out this roof structure, which is gonna be sick. We have some insanely large beams that we need to get up in the air. So it's gonna be exciting. Make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.